It's about to go down. Burning your ears with another all-killer and no-filler episode of the best motorsports radio on the planet. It's the Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. With your host, Jim Beaver. Sliding trophy trucks, jumping razors, and dropping the mic at events across the country. Amy Hood. What's up, guys? I'm a professional fun haver, dirt bike rider, and monster truck driver. With support from Polaris Razor, General Tire, Subaru, and Dirtfish. Hang on tight, strap in, and get ready to smoke some tires and lay some roost. Here's the man who carries a steering wheel in one hand and a mic in the other. Jim Beaver. Welcome to the Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. I am your host, Jim Beaver, coming at you with a slam-packed show with some of the best in action motorsports. I don't know, all kinds of motorsports. Anyways, welcome to the Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. Today's guest, man, coming at you, we got my boy Steve Torrance, NHRA Top Fuel Pilot winner on the weekend, as well as your current points leader in NHRA. We also got my boy Matty Brabs, a.k.a. Matt Brabham. Uh, He is your SST winner. Had a little bit of shenanigans happening there at Texas Motor Speedway, but he's your winner on the weekend and your current points leader in Stadium Super Trucks. And then we also have Keegan Kincaid, Cranon's own Keegan Kincaid. He's on the line here on the Down and Dirty Radio Show as well, talking about the new Lucas Oil Midwest Short Course League, as well as uh, um, Cranon this weekend, man, kicking off the new Lucas Oil Midwest Short Course League with Cranon, the big house. Um, We've got uh, the brush run coming at you this weekend. 225-plus entries. It's going to be a great one. I will be there doing TV for Lucas Oil. Make sure and tune in to that live stream. It's uh, Lucas Oil TV. Uh, You can catch all the fun right there. It's going to be a ton of fun. And then uh, later on, at a later date, it'll be airing on TV. We'll let you know those dates, details, and uh, all the things Lucas Oil TV as we get closer. But, uh, man, great day to be in the studio here on the Down and Dirty Radio Show powered by Polaris Razor. Anytime you get to go short course racing at the end of the week or at least call short course racing, it's a good, good time. So uh, we're going to be taking fan Q&A, fan questions, talking some pro moto, and a whole lot more this week here on the Down and Dirty Radio Show powered by Polaris Razor. You want extreme performance, reliability, and the most fun you can have on four wheels? The Polaris Razor brings it to you. But you don't need to take my word for it. You can take theirs. I'm Tanner Faust, and I choose the Polaris Razor because it's the most fun you can have with a steering wheel. What's up? I'm Ronnie Renner, and I choose Polaris Razor because it's the sickest, most reliable side-by-side on the planet. What's up, everybody? Heavy D from Diesel Brothers. Listen, I'm on Team Razor because it's hands down the best piece of machinery on the planet. I'm RJ Anderson, and I choose Polaris Razor because it's the most fun, most capable machine. Action sports stars, TV personalities, and some of the best race car drivers in the world all choose Polaris Razor because it's the ultimate combination of power, suspension, agility, and fun. Find out more information on the web at PolarisRazor.com or follow at Polaris Razor on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and use the hashtag RazorLife to share your story. The Subaru WRX and WRX STI, a 268-horsepower turbocharged Subaru boxer engine, rockets the WRX around corners and down straightaways. A race-ready 305-horsepower turbocharged Subaru boxer engine keeps the WRX STI a rally legend. The Subaru WRX and WRX STI, it's not a sibling rivalry, it's a tag team. Get the latest from Subaru Rally Team USA at Subaru.com slash rally. For 100 years, General Tire has provided tires for your lifestyle, your adventure, your anywhere. Born from competition, the Grabber Tire offers the durability and off-road traction you demand in a tire. We put these tires to the test in the harshest off-road racing conditions to give you a tire that will make your anywhere possible. So let us take you on your next big adventure. Tweet us photos at General Tire. Hashtag anywhere is possible. Because with General Tire, anywhere is possible. 
Looking to have some fun on four wheels? Dirtfish Rally School has you covered. Packing as much adrenaline and adventure as you can handle into high-performance all-wheel drive and rear-wheel drive Subaru rally cars is where the fun begins at Dirtfish. Just 30 minutes outside of Seattle and Snoqualmie, you'll get a chance to train up to three full days with some of the country's best instructors and be put through the high-octane rush of rally on mud, dirt, and tarmac. Get started today and call 425-888-7715 or visit us online at dirtfish.com and use code 911 for 15% discount. Since 1970, Casey Highlights has been designing and manufacturing performance lighting for off-road and motorsports. Beginning with the legendary Daylighter up until today's revolutionary Flex, Pod, and Pro 6 lighting systems, Casey Highlights offers a full line of halogen, HID, and LED lighting solutions for your off-road vehicle. Looking for the best quality lighting? Looking for the brand champions choose? You're looking for KC Highlights. Find out more information at kchighlights.com or follow them on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at KC Highlights. Thanks for tuning in to the Down and Dirty Radio Show, available live online in syndication on networks across the U.S. and available internationally on the American Forces Network. Welcome back to the Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor, kicking off our number one here, Jim Beaver, Amy Hood. And, uh, man, it was a big weekend in motorsports, big couple of weekends. We've got a lot to talk about today. We've got Keegan Kincaid, Cranon local boy, on air talking Cranon. we got Maddie Brabs, Amy and my friend, who uh, won the Stadium Super Trucks event there at Texas Motor Speedway. Uh, we've also got my Ooh. boy, Steve Torrance, NHRA Top Fuel Points Leader and uh, winner on the weekend this past weekend. He's on the line in hour number two as well. So another slam pack show uh, coming at you. Uh, but first off, uh, a couple of notes. Did want to mention uh, drag racing legend uh, Tom Mongoose McEwen passed away this past, uh, oh, well, mm. I guess yesterday, depending on when you're listening to this. And guy I've never met. We actually had a lot, had a lot of mutual friends, but uh, just a legend. He literally helped st- establish drag racing in this country. One of his, one of the very first big mega stars of the sport. So. Um, yeah. you know, it's, it was very old, you know, it was one of those, like, it's a legend, you know, it's like, um, I don't know. It's just one of those, you got to pay your respects because he, he helped make NHRA what it is today. And, uh, that's, that's saying something, but, uh, um, so that happened, uh, but we've got some other big, exciting news. Um, Cranon coming up this weekend, one I'm really excited about. We're going to talk about this with Keegan here in hour number, uh, well, I guess hour number one. But uh, Keegan, uh, you know, he'll be racing this weekend along with 225 entries at Cranon. That's including a ton of sportsmen. Sportsmen are actually going to get some TV time. Uh, but Cranon, you know, they pack 50,000 people in there in Labor Day. This will be my first time at June Cranon for the brush run. But uh, I'm pretty excited. Amy, anytime you can go to a race and there's like 50,000 rednecks mm-hmm. there and they got, <laughs> they got naked slip and slide going on up in the campground and like, Dang. Uh, it's just, it's so rowdy. I'm so, I'm so excited. I went to Cranon last year. It was my first time actually there. And it was like, I, I felt at home, if that makes any sense. Sometimes you just go to an event and you go, this is me. This is for me. And I get to go to Cranon this weekend and. I don't know. This is, I've only been there once, but it's like Disneyland. It's like one of my favorite places on earth. I don't know. Does it? Do you so understand you're that? Fifty rednecks and naked slip and slide is where you feel most at home, Jim. I mean, this is something very new that I did not know about you. Yeah, well, um, yeah. Not in a suit okay, and tie. that's good to know. Definitely not in a suit and tie. So, uh, uh, you know, true, I, I'm true. Saying, I didn't you know? think it was. I thought maybe it was like more of a fire suit behind the wheel of a razor, but uh, <laughs> you know, not naked slip and slide in a field of hillbillies. But uh, you know, to each his own. Yeah. You're American. I, that's okay. I'll, I won't put it past you. Yeah. Well, we got. I got to ask you. If you ask Travis Pastrana, where would he f- say he feels most at home with a bunch of hillbillies doing naked slip and slide or to suit and tie? What's Trav going to tell you? Yeah. I know. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so I'm just saying. And you surround right. us with 900 horsepower short course trucks, and uh, life <laughs> can't get better. Like, right? It's me and 50,000 of my closest sure. redneck friends. Well, you know, speaking about feeling most at home. Um, Jim, I actually got to go and uh, kind of <laughs> resurrect the racing career. And I said, I say this every year, obviously. I'm, it was funny because one of my girlfriends commented yesterday. She's like, Amy, you've like come back from retirement now like 20 times. you got to stop saying that. But I did. Like, I honestly feel like I completely resurrected the racing career because I drove 13 hours this weekend to go racing. 
And, um, yeah, no, I, yo, you talk about feeling most at home and I was kind of thinking about this and man, like I've been driving monster trucks now for the last few years. I moved to California. I've been kind of like, you know, living this high life, like just, you know, really living out my dreams. There was nothing that is feels cooler and feels more like myself and where I belong and, you know, feels like home than loading up the truck and trailer and going out racing and driving 13 hours to, you know, a race in a different state, people we don't know, and just lining up. Like, it's just so, brings but such nostalgic memories. I just, I, I can't even express how good I felt this weekend. And, you know, having a good time with my friends and meeting new people and winning races, damn, it just feels so good. I felt so at home and I felt more like myself again. It's been kind of weird coming back to Winnipeg and come back to Canada. Um, you know, you, you get off this tour high almost, you know, just traveling the world and stuff. And, you know, this brings, this brings me back to my roots and I feel like it's where I belong. Now, I get that. I completely understand that. Yeah. Like with me, I mean, I, you know, I've been fortunate, you know, I've been to IndyCar races this year and, um, you know, we went to stock car races at, uh, you know, was it Char- Charlotte at the stock car races in NHRA and like amazing people. I love everybody to death that I meet. Very fortunate. But I go home to a desert race at like the Mint 400 or Vegas Torino and I see people yep. that I grew up with that I've been around forever. And it's like it's like I, I'm just I'm at home. Like I, I get that. You know, it's like I, I love doing everything else, but it's like there's just something about being in the desert. Like it, it just brings it all full circle to me. So I, I get it. I feel you, Amy. Yeah. Yeah. And like it's not necessarily like um like, you know, being with people that I know because it's not racing my local series. It's just like it okay. Oh God, I can't believe I'm like making this reference, but they say drug, de- like people who are drug addicts, right? They get addicted to the whole process about the process of it. And it's such the same thing as like motorsports. We always say like, it's a drug. It is. It's not necessarily going and winning races. Like it is going to the grocery store, you know, figuring out what you need for the week and packing the trailer up and loading the bikes up. And, you know, I, I, for me, like, I go across the border I kind of know all the border guys are like, oh, Amy, where are you going racing this weekend? Like, it's just this whole process, meeting up with my buddies, packing the truck up full even more, like three bikes, and and then driving out there. We don't really know where the heck we're going. We're trying to make the gate on time, get in before, like, they close the gate at night and, you know, picking a cool spot, unloading, making friends. We run out of propane, like, you know, knocking on your neighbor's camper door to get propane tanks or the barbecue, like, it's just whole weird process of racing and that racing life and the lifestyle behind it all. And just everything else, not even necessarily riding on the tracks and stuff, but obviously that's like a huge part, but it's, it's the process that comes together that makes this life that I live just so crazy. It's like a drug and it's a high that I'm on all the time. And I, and I love it. And, you know, I, I really needed that this weekend. They say, like, you know, go back to your roots. If you're, you always feel like you're not yourself and you need to, you know, kind of have a reality check, go back to your roots. And I did that this weekend. I did it last weekend as well when I went racing. And I realized how much I need that in my life and how big two wheels will always be for me and grounding me and bringing me back and making me feel like my best self. And, um, you know, Jim, I, I think I let... I re 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 resurrected the racing career once again. Um, you know, I'm really investing a lot into this. I'm gonna go be going to Red Bud, Millville. I hit a couple of big nationals this year. I'm gonna be racing. So um, yeah, I'm just I'm having a lot of fun and I'm doing really good. So I just think like you know when you're having a good time, you're actually performing at your best. So you know this this might be a pretty rad summer now. <laughs> Well, you got to be careful though, because you you like talking about going to nationals and everything. Like, I know, like I know, but okay, yeah, I'm going to because... nationals, but I'm racing amateur day, okay. if you will. Like, I'm not racing pro women's nationals. I'm done that scene. I'm going. I'm racing like plus twenty five. I'm racing the plus twenty five class and like women's class on, on amateur day. But I get to ride pro track, get to travel. Um, you know, we'll we'll talk about it in the next segment here. But I've been actually going and traveling with my buddy who's chasing his pro card right now. So it's pretty cool because. I get to race amateur day and he's my pit biatch, if you will. Like, you know, he's my pit guy. And then on pro day, you know, the gear, you know, the tables turn and I get to like, no pressure, have, you know, crack a beer and go to the line and, and and like, you know, be the factory mechanic (laughs) for him. 
So it's kind of cool because I get best of both worlds now. I get to go race, but I get to be a part of the pro scene, and there's no pressure. I mean, I still really enjoy racing um, the amateur day and, like, the privateer life and stuff, but I kind of get to switch gears a little bit and have some fun with it. And, like, that's what it's all about. Like, I've always been that person that likes to – like, I just want to stay credible, Jim, okay? I just want to stay credible. I just want to go to the races, beat a couple fast people, do my thing, you know, lay some sick little butt whips down, and, you know, people are like, oh, cool, Amy's so fast. <laughs> That's all it really takes for me. Like, you know, I want to go and, like, oh, I hit a new jump I didn't hit. Like, I did this section at the track this weekend, you know, this double, triple section out of a corner, which I never thought I'd do, but I'm like, I did it. And I'm like, cool. That's all I really needed to do. You know, you got to kind of prove to yourself that you still got it. Sometimes you like to prove to others because people like to give you a hard time because of the internet. But, um, yeah, you know, I just, I'm just having fun with it. Like, this is the summer to have fun on my dirt bike, and I'm excited. Awesome. Well, I think you're having fun. I know I've got some razor runs lined up. I've got Vegas Torino the end of the, the, end of the summer, but between then and – then I got a couple razor runs lined up doing TV with Lucas yeah. for this new Midwest short course league. So uh, lots, uh, lots of stuff for both of us this summer, man. It's going to be one hell of a summer. Lots but, of fun. Uh, We're yeah. going to have a lot of fun, you know, driving and riding stuff this summer. I'm excited. Me too. All right, we're going to take a short commercial break. We come back. We got Matt Brabham, Matty Brabs on the line, your Texas Stadium Super Trucks winner on the Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. Want the latest from Jim Beaver and Amy Hood? Follow at Jim Beaver 15 and at Amy Hood 71 on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Welcome back to the Down and Dirty Radio Show powered by Polaris Razor. Joining me on the line right now is your Texas Stadium Super Trucks winner, Matty Brabs, a.k.a. Matt Brabham. So I know since you and I talked last, we were out at Long Beach, and uh, you, me, and Amy were able to catch up, but you went and spent some time in Australia. And before we talk about Australia, i got to ask you, I know you posted up some pictures, and I did one of my accounts, but you got to tell me about this Brabham Auto, uh, the BT-62. You posted some pictures. Have you seen this thing in the flesh yet? Yeah, yeah, I have actually. Uh, yeah, when I was back in Australia, I went out to a, a little shakedown they had of a, of a new one they built and uh, had a look. And uh, yeah, it was it was awesome. I mean, it's just this. Uh, it's a track car at the end of the day, um, and uh, you know, it's all done by my uncle David uh, Brabham, and uh, he's based in London and he's been coming back and forward from the UK uh, to Australia, and it's uh, an Australian built car, and it's kind of like a. Um, yeah, like I don't know what you compare it to, but there's like a, an Aston Martin Vulcan, I think, that, that they have around. And uh, similar to that, where you just go to the track, have a bunch of guys come out and you run it. But, uh, I mean, the thing is, is bloody quick. It's seriously fast. Yeah, I think it was just one of those, once in a while you see a car and it just kind of like, especially on social media, it's hard because people can dress up photos. But that one, I saw it and I'm just like, like takes your breath away. I'm like, wow, like that, that one will stop people in their tracks. Like it was just a good looking car. They give you a chance to wheel that thing? Uh, not yet, not yet. We were just, they just did like a few laps and that, that was it. And when I was there, but David, he's been in Australia testing it um, over the last like, few weeks. So I'll, I'll get to drive it probably when I go back. But um, it, it's so far. I mean, it's like, it's a lot quicker than a, a GT3 car already. So it's, you know, it's bloody fast and uh, it should be interesting to see how, how it all goes. And, and, you know, obviously David has a, a long-term plan. And, you know, I hope to see it do well and obviously get into some racing and bring the, the Brabham manufacturer side of things, uh, you know, back in the motorsport. I think that'd be awesome. Yeah, I think it'd be rad. It's been, uh, you know, it's been a long time coming, man. Uh, but uh, I'm excited yeah. for that. Excited for you this year, though. I mean, we we got to talk about the Stadium Super Truck Series and uh, um, you're the current points leader. But, man, Texas, you you went from, uh, you know, they say sugar to, you know, like, I I don't know, man. What what happened in race one? I mean, you did, you were Mr. Excitement in race one, and then you come back and, and yeah. win race number two. I mean, uh, what the hell happened? Like a triple barrel roll down the front stretch or something? Yeah, it was kind of like a hero to zero, that hero moment. Um, you know, that was quickest in qualifying, started last, and uh, got my way up into third spot with a couple laps to go in the first race and I don't know what happened, but I mean, like I'm still confused a little bit exactly as how my hood came up, but uh, my hood just came up 
I couldn't see where I was going. So I was like, oh, you know, I, I need to try and go as fast as I can so that the hood will rip off and I can I can continue <laughs> seeing and get some, some good points for the championship. And it wouldn't come off. Like, no matter what I did, it wouldn't come off. So I was like, I think I'm just going to have to hit a jump. And, you know, that's probably wasn't the smartest thing <laughs> to, to think about with when you can't see it all. And uh, I was following a guy. I was following Jeff Hoffman. And he has, like, this bright white truck. And I thought maybe I could follow him and then follow where he goes on the jump and hopefully the wind catches it on the jump and rips it off. And, uh, yeah, I probably shouldn't have done that. And uh, he, he hit the jump. Like, I could only see out the left side of my truck. And he hit the jump um, right on the right side of the jump. So I'm looking at the left. So I'm slightly to his right. And I just hit the jump, like, uh, two wheels on and two wheels off and bow rolled three times down the straight and got rid of the hood. But, unfortunately, uh, yeah, damaged the, the front suspension so I couldn't keep going. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's funny because listening to this whole story, like I, I gotta go back to the start of it. You go, yeah, I couldn't see, so my my first thought was drive faster and rip the hood off. I'm like, only in only yeah. race car drivers would think that way, right? Oh, I can't see. We better go and, uh, faster and just rip the hood off. You know, it's like oh. I think in, in hindsight, I probably should have, uh, you know, just tried to go back and get the guys to rip it off or something, and then got some points out of it but you know i was thinking oh championship i gotta keep going i gotta stay in the top four top three and then uh yeah it all it all uh ended with uh yeah some some fun and flips down the straight which wasn't ideal but <laughs> well you know the thing that i that i find really interesting makes for some crazy racing with stadium super trucks the way they invert everything so like you know the fastest guys which is you most cases you know you're one of the usually top two three guys in qualifying and things like that you get inverted all the way to the back. So it's almost like, you know, like you've got to fight through everybody. I mean, it makes for some crazy racing, but it's so interesting. I mean, I can only imagine an Indy car if they did something like that. Hey, let's shake it up. You know, Hey, you just, you know, <laughs> you just qualify out of the pole. We're going to start you back at 25th place or something, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's obviously like a, a the format is kind of designed to promote racing and side by side. And, you know, obviously the guys that aren't always at the front, they get to go, lead the first couple laps which is you know good for their sponsors and stuff and then it makes it so much fun because like i don't know if you ever like played a video game and you, obviously if you qualify first you're, you're running a little bit quicker than everyone and if you play a video game you always start last and you're a little bit quicker than the field like passing the cars is what is enjoyable um you know obviously when we get to the last three laps it comes more down to a kind of more traditional motor race where you're trying to stretch it out you're trying to get the lead and it comes down to like a final lap battle between, you know, the top kind of guys. Because by the end of the race, you know, all the top fastest guys manage to get through some way um, or another. But, uh, I mean, I think it's just awesome. It's It's been so good for me because I get to, like, keep learning passing and, uh, and especially getting through the pack. And it's been so much fun doing it. I mean, it's just awesome motor racing. Well, you know, and one thing I, I talked with Sheldon Creed out at Charlotte. I was there for the ARCA race, and uh, we were talking about stadium super trucks, and uh, we were talking about Robbie Gordon in particular, and I know Robbie's been really good to you. And uh, But it was uh, – Sheldon goes, he goes, you know, when this thing started out, Robbie was winning everything. These are his trucks. He built them, and everybody's like, oh, this is rigged. Robbie's winning. It's his own series. Now, like – Robbie's struggling for podiums, and like Sheldon said, he's like, when I started winning, he's like, Robbie just literally, he's like, we're good friends. He's like, he quit telling me anything. He's like, but what I think is great <laughs> about this is like, guys like Sheldon, when he comes in, and you who have been in the series, like, like you guys have got, you know, you guys have got to the point where you're beating Robbie consistently, and now you're faster, and he's probably learning things from you guys, and these are the trucks he helped build and design. Yeah, yeah, I know. I think, I think if, you know, it's one of those things where, Obviously, he's kind of the guru of it all, but, um, you know, it's just, uh, I think Robbie's still quick. You know, I, I, I still don't underestimate him. I mean, he can come out any race weekend and, and have a good good run and win, but it's just, oh, sorry, that's my dog. Um, oh, good. But he's, 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 um, he's bloody good. I mean, he obviously coaches all the young guys that are coming in and the new guys, but um, for me, yeah, I mean, he's kind of stopped giving me tips, and, you know, but he's such a, such a good guy, and he looks after everyone, and we have good races and stuff. But, yeah, for sure. I mean, I think as all the new guys come in, especially like off-road guys, I mean, I learned so much from those guys. Like Sheldon Creed, you know, I learned so much from him because he has like a whole different persona and the way he goes about things coming from the off-road side. And I think 
all of those guys are learning from me because I come from the road course side and, you know, everyone's just getting better and better every weekend. And it's tough because Robbie's running everything. And I think he's, uh, you know, having to spend more time doing a lot of that stuff than trying to keep up with us. So we're, we're starting to beat him a little bit more often. <laughs> yeah. Well, and, you know, let's talk about, uh, you know, this year and then moving forward. Obviously, you know, you, you found a home in stadium super trucks. You're doing super well there. You're current points leader and things like that. I know talking with you at Long Beach and then at Indy, you know, last year and things like that. I know you still got that itch for IndyCar. I mean, um, you know, are you pretty happy and, you know, in the near term, you know, with stadium super trucks in the next year or two? Or, I mean, is, is there still like, are you still fighting and, and trying to find that funding for an IndyCar or, you know, even a sports car ride or something like that? Yeah, I mean, I'm always like, I mean, you know, my goal, you know, ultimate dream goal is to, to win the 500, and it's been like that for for a while now. And and I think, you know, I always keep working towards that. If I can get back in or find some sponsorship to do a few more IndyCar car races, you know, I think that would just be so cool. And uh, you know, it's something that I'm always working towards. But you know, in the near future, for sure. I mean, I'm I'm loving it and same super trucks. You know, I'm obviously making. A living and the sponsorship is, is quite good and, and they have a good crowd all their races good you know social media following and all that and uh you know to make a living motor racing is so tough these days so uh you know i'm obviously still grateful and, I, and i'm quite content and happy and you know i'm doing the super trucks you know and that's getting me by and then i'm also going to be doing the, the supercars in australia this year so um you know i've only been home for like four or five weeks this whole entire year and uh for you know Comparing that to when I was uh, knocking on the door of IndyCar, not doing anything, you know, only a couple of years ago, it's uh, it's pretty good. And, you know, Robbie's really looked after me well. And, uh, yeah, I'm having a good time. I'm, I'm having fun. So I keep doing what I'm doing and obviously work towards uh, IndyCar stuff in all my spare time and see see what, see what happens. But, no, I think Super Trucks is super healthy. And we're all having a good time. And, yeah, it's been heaps of fun. Yeah, well, and, and that being said, I mean, Super Trucks, I know what it costs to run a full season there, and it's so small compared to IndyCar. I mean, you know, Robbie's got a great package with great exposure, and obviously, you know, it's not, you know, primetime NBC live, you know, coverage, but it's still a really good TV package. I mean, do you find it's it's a little bit easier to go, hey, look, I'm going to run Stadium Super Trucks. This is the dollar amount. You get all of this for this very small amount, or, hey, I need IndyCar budget, you know, better go take out a loan so you can fund me going racing you know <laughs> yeah absolutely i mean it's definitely a lot easier to find a budget for, for super trucks right now um you know that, that indy car i mean I'll, I'll keep trying it's obviously super expensive uh a lot more expensive to run indy car but uh yeah i mean it's just it's just the battle that, that all of us struggle as race car drivers you know just trying to find the funding and the opportunities and you know the ones that uh, you know are good at the business side, but aren't necessarily the best racing drivers. They're usually the ones that, that make it through, and uh, the good drivers like uh, you and myself. There, you have to try to like uh, figure out and learn the whole business side and and keep learning as much as we can, and uh, and try and make it work. Sure. So what's next for you? Uh, I know uh, SST's got a little bit of a break. It's uh, back to supercars now. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So uh, I'll go back to Australia at the end of next month and then uh, get uh, do a test day, uh, get ready. And um, we got a couple little ride days here and there and just some time in the car. Uh, but well, my first race in the supercar is in September. So I'll come back and do Wisconsin before then at Road America with the super trucks and then back and back over. So I'm going to be back and forth quite a lot. Yeah. Lots of frequent flyer miles. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Matty. Well, I appreciate the time calling in, man. Congrats on uh, both the win in Texas and the points lead, and uh, hopefully we'll be able to catch up with you out at one of these events pretty soon. Yeah, thanks, man. Cheers. Right. Thanks a lot. And we'll be back after this on the Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. I'm Polaris rider Jim Beaver. I race trophy trucks professionally, host the Down and Dirty Radio Show, and also travel the country announcing motorsports events. I've seen it all, and trust me, I've done most of it, so when it comes time to relax on the weekend, nothing is better than taking time with my family in our Razor vehicles. They've got the reliability I need to just pick up and go explore the desert dunes or trail and have the capability to attack even the harshest terrain. If you're looking for some of the most reliable and safest and hands-down most capable off-road machines in the world, look no further than 
and Polaris in their award-winning lineup of Razor vehicles. Whether you want your daughter to experience off-road driving for the first time in a Razor 170 like me, take the entire family out in a Razor XP4 1000 on the weekend, or shred the desert and dunes in the all-new Razor XP 1000 Fox Edition, Polaris has you handled. Take my advice and join me and some of the best drivers in the world by driving a Polaris Razor. Check out the full Polaris Razor lineup at Polaris.com or follow them on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Polaris Razor. Your life demands a tire that provides durability, comfort, and performance, and that's what General Tire delivers for you. From the all-season grip of the Grabber UHP to the comfort and on-road manners of the Grabber HTS to the durability and off-road traction of the Grabber AT2, General has a tire that will help get you where you need to go. So let us take you on your next big adventure. Tweet us at General Tire, hashtag anywhere is possible, because with General Tire, anywhere is possible. Sound, the sound of sports, the sound of the racetrack, and the sound of your vehicle. Don't drive around listening to this. Drive around listening to the sound of performance. Gibson Performance. Gibson Performance Exhaust is the company who can turn this into this. Remember that life is all about sound, and Gibson Exhaust is the sound of performance. Check out your next catback exhaust system, headers, muffler, or UTV exhaust at GibsonPerformance.com and get more power and more sound. Since 1970, Casey Highlights has been designing and manufacturing performance lighting for off-road and motorsports, beginning with the legendary Daylighter up until today's revolutionary Flex, Pod, and Pro 6 lighting systems. Casey Highlights offers a full line of halogen, HID, and LED lighting solutions for your off-road vehicle. Looking for the best quality lighting? Looking for the brand champions choose? You're looking for KC Highlights. Find out more information at kchighlights.com or follow them on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at KC highlights the subaru wrx and wrx sti a 268 horsepower turbocharged subaru boxer engine rockets the wrx around corners and down straightaways a race ready 305 horsepower turbocharged subaru boxer engine keeps the wrx sti a rally legend the subaru wrx and wrx sti it's not a sibling rivalry it's a tag team Get the latest from Subaru Rally Team USA at Subaru.com slash rally. Like what you hear? Catch all the back episodes of the Down and Dirty Radio Show on Apple Podcast. And be sure to rate, review, and subscribe. Welcome back to the Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. I'd like to welcome my next guest to the line, my good friend, Vision Wheels teammate, Keegan Kincaid. How's everything going, Keegan? Good, Jim. How have you been? Oh, good, man. I, You know, it's like I said in the intro to the show today, I'm headed to Cranon this weekend, and I don't know if life can get much better than uh, heading to Cranon, uh, I guess, any time during the summer, man. Uh, I'm excited. Yeah, you know, uh, we've been trying to, I think, get you out here for a long time. You know, I think I first started uh, on the show, I think. Um, we've been trying to get you out here, and it's uh, finally going to happen for you. So uh, I'm glad to bring you to my hometown and see what uh, we have to offer here so it's uh, going to be a great weekend the uh, weather should be good and uh, track and fans are uh, going to be ready for a new um, new midwest short course league and uh, it's going to be a great weekend yeah and i'm excited you know it was one of those i went back there uh what was it last year marty from cranon invited me back to do some radio interviews and stuff like that for the big weekend and it was like dude i fell in love with the place absolutely fell in love with it and I think it was it was immediately after uh, it was immediately after I got home. I started going on and looking at like rentals and stuff like that. And I rented a house on the lake for this uh, for this next coming Labor Day weekend. And I was like, I tell and my dad, you know, he he raced Riverside and all the short course races out here out west. You know, in between racing Class A, but Cranon was the one he never got to go to, and we always wanted to. And so I told him I rented a house. I'm like, Dad, you're coming back with me to Cranon over Labor Day. So we had that all planned. And then I got the call from Lucas when the whole merger happened, and they wanted me to help with TV. And I'm like, well, this is even better. I get to go to all the Cranons, and you're paying me to go. Yeah, so. yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know, uh, well, that's one thing that comes hard around here. A town of 2,000 people turns to a town of 50,000, and uh, they run out of spots to stay. So um, it's going to be a, a fun, fun-filled fun weekend, and uh, I, I look forward to it. Yeah, well, and here's a question, man. I mean, I know this off season has been, uh, you know, it's been a wild one for everybody in short course, uh, especially you guys from the Midwest series. 
Um, I mean, how are things? I mean, Lucas came in, uh, you know, they're helping out. They're doing the TV. It's kind of a rebranded series. I know this year is kind of one of those years. It's kind of like a, I think 2019 is the year we're really going to uh, see how everything kind of works out. Um, but there's at least solid TV this year, and you know what I mean? And, and you know, obviously looking at Cran, and I think there's like 225 entries I just saw on the entry list. Like, um, I mean, but how's things for you? I mean, you've got a pro team. You're a pro two. You're one of the, you know, one of the premier teams, uh, you know, racing in the Midwest. I mean, how's things for you, and how's this off season been? Yeah, you know, this off, off season has been uh, really interesting uh, with the change in series, and um, we look forward to it. I think things are uh, looking good on the horizon, and um, Vision Wheel has been behind me and, and has been pushing me in um, whatever direction I chose. They've been uh, really good on that side, and um, and it's just been a, a good good off season on that side of it. Cooper Tires stepped up and helped me out on the Pro Two, and they really wanted me to go to Pro Two. Running the DOT uh, um, is has been one of their um, pushes through the series, and um, it's going to be exciting. You know, I've I've won the the cup races in 2016 in the pro two i'm excited to get back into it and um chad horde stepping down and coming to race pro two again we'll have mikey van and who's uh, daily tentacles in, in our shop working on their truck i mean it's going to be a, a fun action-packed weekend and um, i'm excited you know we're building a brand new truck we have zero testing on it right now it's uh, kind of in the trend for myself but uh um not something we like to do but we look forward to it and uh, I'm excited to uh, actually get back on the track and get back into the racing thing. So, yeah. Well, and that being said, I mean, a brand new truck, um, you know, heading to Cran, and obviously, you know that track. You and your dad know that track just better than anybody. I mean, you've got so much time there between the two of you. But, um, I mean, how do you approach this weekend in a new truck? I mean, I know there's practices and things like that beforehand. I mean, that's one of those you need to use what every every minute, every second of those sessions you get a chance to. Yeah, every second you're on the track is valuable time, and you just got to uh, take it as it is, and um, hopefully we're, we have a close setup. I mean, we ran Pro 2 before, and um, we, we've been there, and um, Bill Stein came on us with this with this year, so well, we have a new shock set up, and we're excited to, to get out on the track and try them and put them to use, and um, tracks us again, stepped up, and um, helped out again, and um put some put some products for my uh, we'll be selling tractors cars at the track i mean we're on the way up and and just like the series i think things are going to look good and um, we're just sticking around and um, like you said i think 2019 is when we're really going to see it and see a change so uh, we look forward to this year learning and um, working together and not just as, as drivers and um, as series and and look to see where things go so yeah well and and you know and I know the Midwest Series, you know, in recent years, it's been it's been picking up a lot of steam. I mean, uh, obviously, you've got, you know, the two events at Cranon that keep growing and growing and growing. And, and, you know, Bark River has been Bark River for years. I mean, the new facility at ERX is beautiful. I mean, you know, how is it racing there? I mean, that that's one, you, you know, you know, I know you guys have been, you know, concentrated on the Midwest Series. I mean, how is that when they throw a new track like that in, you know, and especially when you know a guy like Carlson's got, you know, probably a little bit of uh, – he's kind of got a leg up over there kind of like you do at Cranon. Yeah. I mean, uh, you know, how, how is that? How do you approach that as a driver? And obviously this isn't the first year for ERX. It's been around for a year or two now. But, uh, you know, how, how do you approach a track like that and gathering that data and learning, you know, an all-new track? Yeah, you know, um, ERX is, is not like any other track in the Midwest. And, and I, I really enjoy that. It brings something different to uh, the aspect of Midwest racing. And we got the Bug Rivers and we got the Cranes, the high-speed tracks and um, ERX becomes a technical. It's got a lot of sand and a lot of you know, different clay and you know, a lot of elevation changes, and um, it brings a lot of uh, different things that we don't see here. And uh, it's exciting. And um, Carlson has a, a lot of time on this track, and um, it's going to be a tough one. You know, that's my old winning truck, so uh, I know what that truck is capable of. And, and we've seen Carlson go out and win it last year. And, um, he's going to be one of those that compete and. Um, it's just something that you got to learn to adapt. Also, racing is, is not a lot of test time. You just don't get to take it out every single day and um, go and tune on it and make it right and make yourself right. It's, it's learning to adapt fast and um, giving that little bit of edge, and, and that's what everybody's looking for. And, um, it's going to be some interesting racing this year, and it's going to be fun, and look forward to banging doors with those guys. Well, and, you know, 
talk about let's let's talk about the move you know full time to pro two obviously you know pro two is not something completely you know brand new to you or anything like that but uh um you know talk about that because it is a little bit different especially you know the midwest pro two package i actually really like the midwest pro two package i think it keeps things you know cost you know in line where they don't just get astronomical especially with the you know engine prices and things like that but um you know looking at that and then and then looking at like the cup races uh, you know, to come and things like that. I mean, how, how do you approach things with a Pro 2 this year? Yeah, you know, it's a, um, just goes back to this This Pro 2 is totally different. They have a spec engine pack, um, package now that is run in this Midwest series. And it, it showed last year that they're reliable, um, the DOTs hold up, and it's just become um, way more affordable to run. And that was one of my major things to, to go back down and run a spec class and, um, where it doesn't become a whole lot of money being involved into it, and uh, it can show a lot of driver skill and get developed, you know, things off of the chassis and do new things. And um, that's what my dad wanted to do. He started building this chassis in the fall with no intent of me racing it um, this spring. And one thing led to another sponsor pushed me one way, and um, it worked out. And uh, I'm excited to actually be going down. And, uh, the competition is going to be fierce in that class, and. Uh, I look forward to it. It's going to be an uh, interesting year, and it's going to it's going to go by fast. But uh, we look forward to uh, the years to come and, and doing some battles with more and more people. I think stepping up into this class. So, yeah. Well, and you know, talking about the Cup races, you've been you know you you've run a Cup race in a Pro Two, uh, you've run it in a Pro Four. I mean, there's there's give and take to both. I mean, is it a little bit of nerve wracking being a being in a Pro Two in that Cup race and knowing? Mm-hmm. Uh, hey man, I got a bunch of uh, a bunch of these pro fours hunting me down. Or, or is it better to be the pro four guy and and be the hunter? I mean, you tell me. You you oh, done yeah, it both yeah. ways, buddy. Yeah, it's it's definitely better to be the hunt hunter than the hunted. So um, the pro two is is um, really intense. You know, throughout that race, you get your gap, and it just keeps shortening and shortening throughout the event, and uh, it just it just really hard to deal with. Where the pro four, you're just in kill mode and uh, hunting these guys down and um, picking them off one right after another. And um, I, I like both aspects, you know, and I've done it in both. And, um, but the Pro 4 is definitely um, the easier side of it, you know, and they always have an advantage one up. And so when you can go and win it in a Pro 2, it means more. And uh, that's what I look forward to trying to do again this year. And, um, and for years to come, you know, that's one of my um, highlights, I think, in my career is winning it in the, in the place here and, uh, to repeat it would be um, something amazing. You know, I'd like to win it in the Pro 4, and hopefully one day we'll be able to. But um, this year we're looking at the Pro 2 and, and repeating in that. So uh, we look forward to it and ready to race. So. Yeah, and that's probably one of those, especially in a Pro 2, you need to – you need to get the whole shot, right? You need to put all those other Pro 2s between you and the Pro 4s, and, and that way you've got clean air at least for a while, uh, you know, and you're able to, you know, try and stretch out that lead, right? I mean, it's, you know, the start's got to be so yeah. crucial in a cup race for for the Pro 2 guys. Yeah, and uh, Cranon, and especially with the land rush start, uh, one of the most, you know, crucial parts of Cranon is getting that whole shot, and cup race is even more important, and that's one thing I look for you know, you have to be fully concentrated on that line and uh, look to get that whole shot and just run away and hide. And uh, hopefully the pro fours, pro twos get the battle entangled with each other and it just works in your favor. I mean, it's not a lot of skill. Uh, it takes a lot of luck. And uh, hopefully they get a lot of battle in and uh, you end up in the right spot. So that's why they race it. And uh, the, the start is just uh, something to see. If you had never seen the crane and start and, the land rush, it's its one of the most adrenaline rush, rushes you'll ever get. So I look forward to doing it again this year and finally getting back in the car. Yeah. Well, and what's, uh, what's the calendar look like for you the, you this year? I know we've got the four Midwest events, the two at Cran and the one at Bark River, the one at ERX. Uh, past that, I mean, are, are you going to try and uh, yeah. well, I get, uh, you know, make it out west? I guess with the, with the engine package, it makes it kind of tough to bring a Pro 2 out west. But, I mean, what, what's the plans for you? Yeah, so our plan is uh, to do these four Midwest for sure. And then we're looking at going out to the last Lucas event in Chandler, Arizona. And, uh, but we want to put our uh, bigger engine package back in that we ran um, in our other pro too. So um, it'll take a little bit of time to convert it. We made this truck really similar so uh, we can swap engines back and forth. And um, we would like to race Wheatland with the engine package. And 
uh, just that short time frame, it just kind of hurt us a little bit. So we're really focusing on trying to get out to that last race in Taylor, Arizona, and just seeing what we can do with um, some of these guys from Lucas in um, the West or the West Series and just compete with those guys and just show them what we've got. So uh, look forward to it and um, see what happens with these four events and prepare from that. So. Yeah. So, uh, you know, w- what can fans expect this weekend? I saw 225 entries so far. Uh, I mean, you know, everybody wants to call Fall Cranon the Big Cranon. I call both Cranons the Big Cranon, man. It's, uh, I, I, I don't know that there isn't a packed house at either one. I mean, the entry list is solid. I mean, you're from Cranon. Give, it, give us a pitch. What can people expect this weekend? Yeah, you know, uh, Cranon is, is definitely something to see. And this, this weekend you'll see twenty to 30,000 fans. Um, just waiting, uh, you know, around turn one. And the entry list is going to be even bigger than it's ever had in the spring run and this brush run. And the Cliff and the guys from Cranon have done an amazing job prepping this track and adding clay. And um, the facility just continues to improve. They added more campgrounds again this year, and um, they continue to sell out. And it's just something to see. And and this is a a lead-up to the fall, is like I like to say. It's a good, good brush run pre-run for the big fall crane and then um it's fun because this is my hometown track my hometown fans my hometown family and uh it's good to be able to go home and sleep in your own bed and uh just just look forward to putting on a great show um racers are coming from all i think like you said we have 225 entries plus i think people will end up showing up and entering at the race and it's just going to be an overall great weekend and if you're in the area stay on and check it out so Awesome. Well, I appreciate the time, Keegan. I know you got uh, it's race week, man. You probably got some uh, some prep yeah. to do yet, and and things like that. But uh, thanks for calling into the show, and uh, we will see you Friday, my friend. Thanks, Jim. Yep, we're busy here uh, trying to prep this truck and finish it up. So it's crunch time. Uh, that's when we work best is under pressure. So we look forward to seeing you this weekend, and being on hopefully on top of that box. So all right, thanks for, uh, thanks for calling. All yep. right, awesome. Thanks, Keegan. Take it easy, my friend. Thank you. And we'll be back after this on the Downer Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. You're listening to the Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. All killer and no filler. Welcome back to the Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. Uh, man, slam packed hour number one. Matty Brabs, SST winner, Keegan Kincaid, rolling into Crandon this weekend. Uh, thank you guys for tuning in to hour number one. Hour number two coming up. Uh, we've got some Q&As with some fans talking some pro motocross. We've got Steve Torrance, you're an HRA winner. He's coming up in hour number two as well. Uh, be sure and tune in to me on Lucas Oil TV this weekend. I will be uh, one of your, your color commentator along with Tess Sewell and Rob Klepper. Uh, there at Cranon at uh, the big event there at, uh, you know, at Cranon, the uh, birthplace of short course off-road. Um, do uh, want to mention, i got a big interview coming up on Project Action this week. Brittany Palmer from the UFC, UFC ring girl Brittany Palmer. Uh, she, is, uh, she is my guest on Project Action. We talked for a good hour the other day. She's an artist, UFC ring girl. Uh, it's an amazing interview. You're going to want to catch that on Project Action on Podcast One or at Down and Dirty Radio or Down and Dirty Show.com. But make sure and rate, review, and subscribe. Subscribe on iTunes to get that podcast as well as the Down and Dirty Radio Show. Uh, lots of good content coming out. Not uh, necessarily just all national radio show stuff. We drop a ton of co- audio content um, to those feeds. So make sure and check those out. And make sure and check out our website, downanddirtyshow.com. We've got uh, my good friend Chris Leone. You remember him from Global Rallycross. He's pumping out a ton of written content. Uh, all things motorsport. He's pumping it out on the website. Uh, you guys can definitely check that out at downanddirtyshow.com. Let us know what you think on social media. It's at Jim Beaver 15. Um, you know, it's uh, it's always good to hear from you fans and, you know, what you like, what you don't like, and uh, what you want to see more of. So we're going to take a short commercial break. And uh, when we come back, hour number two coming at you with Steve Torrance, motocross and Q&As, all that and more on the Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. 
want extreme performance, reliability, and the most fun you can have on four wheels, the Polaris Razor brings it to you. But you don't need to take my word for it. You can take theirs. I'm Tanner Faust, and I choose the Polaris Razor because it's the most fun you can have with a steering wheel. What's up? I'm Ronnie Renner, and I choose Polaris Razor because it's the sickest, most reliable side-by-side -side on the planet. What's up, everybody? Heavy D from Diesel Brothers. Listen, I'm on Team Razor because it's hands down the best piece of machinery on the planet. I'm RJ Anderson, and I choose Polaris Razor because it's the most fun, most capable machine. Action sports stars, TV personalities, and some of the best race car drivers in the world all choose Polaris Razor because it's the ultimate combination of power, suspension, agility, and fun. Find out more information on the web at PolarisRazor.com or follow at Polaris Razor on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and use the hashtag RazorLife to share your story. Thanks for tuning in to the Down and Dirty Radio Show, available live online, in syndication on networks across the U.S., and available internationally on the American Forces Network. Welcome back to the Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor, kicking off hour number two, and hour number two means a Dirt Fish Rally report coming at you from our good friends at Dirt Fish Rally School. Find out more information on the web at www.dirtfish.com. Com. And uh, if you're looking to go to Dirtfish, make sure and use that coupon code JBDIRTFISH for 15% off all class purchases at Dirtfish Rally School. And uh, don't forget, coming up July 7th, it is Summerfest at Dirtfish. I will be there. My good friend Jolene Van Butte will be there. And uh, it's going to be a ton of fun. They've got uh, ride-alongs. They've got car displays. they got food, vendors, um, Helicopter rides, lots of fun for the kids. Make sure to bring out the whole family. That is July 7th. Uh, you can find out more information on Dirtfish's social media or on their website. Um, but it's going to be a ton of fun. Can't wait to uh, go up there to Seattle and uh, take on the Summerfest. And um, big news coming out of Dirtfish and ARX, the new American Rallycross series. Uh, Dirtfish uh, going to be the title sponsor of a new event at Circuit of the Americas. And also, uh, you know, they're being tied in with uh, – with them at uh, at a level, I guess, for the entire season. Uh, but Dirtfish Rally School going to be the new title sponsor of an event at Circuit of the Americas. Now, uh, we knew that uh, there was going to be the event at Coda tying in with uh, World Rallycross, that happening the end of uh, September, beginning of October, that weekend that kind of uh, crossover between the two. Uh, same weekend as the Lucas Oil Off-Road Expo. Um, and then we also know, you know, obviously there's the event at Troy Rivers in Quebec, Canada. We've already had the uh, round uh, over there in England at Silverstone. Uh, but they've got that new, uh, the new round that's, uh, you know, TBD, TBD uh, Circuit of the Americas, mid-July, the weekend after Dirtfish Summerfest. Uh, so, uh, you know, if you're a Rallycross fan, boom, Coda, be there. Uh, Dirtfish title sponsor of that. Uh, I'm assuming my Dirtfish teammate James Rimmer, he's going to be in action, banging doors. Um, but, uh, you know, looking forward to it. Uh, you know, it's going to be the first, uh, I guess, ARX round on American soil. And uh, very, very much looking forward to it. I don't know if I'll be at that one or if I'll be at the one, um, you know, the end of September. But I'm going to be at one of the two rounds there at Circuit of the Americas and uh, very much looking forward to, uh, to that. It's going to be a good time. And, uh, you know, how can you – Circuit of the Americas, beautiful facility. You've got Rallycross. Uh, how can you ask for much more, right? It's going to be a good time. Anyways, that was your Dirtfish Rally Report for this week, brought to you by our good friends at Dirtfish Rally School, and we will be back after this on the Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. I'm Polaris rider Jim Beaver. I race trophy trucks professionally, host a Down and Dirty Radio Show, and also travel the country announcing motorsports events. I've seen it all, and trust me, I've done most of it, so when it comes time to relax on the weekend, nothing is better than taking time with my family in our Razor vehicles. They've got the reliability I need to just pick up and go explore the desert dunes or trail and have the capability to attack even the harshest terrain. If you're looking for some of the most reliable and safest and hands-down most capable off-road machines in the world, look no further than Polaris and their award-winning lineup of Razor vehicles. Whether you want your daughter to experience off-road driving for the first time in a Razor 170 like me, take the entire family out in a Razor XP4 1000 on the weekend, or shred the desert and dunes in the all-new Razor XP1000 Fox Edition, Polaris has you handled. Take my advice and join me and some of the best drivers in the world by driving a Polaris Razor. Check out the full Polaris Razor lineup at Polaris.com 
or follow them on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Polaris Razor. For 100 years, General Tire has provided tires for your lifestyle, your adventure, your anywhere. Born from competition, the Grabber Tire offers the durability and off-road traction you demand in a tire. We put these tires to the test in the harshest off-road racing conditions to give you a tire that will make your anywhere possible. So let us take you on your next big adventure. Tweet us photos at General Tire, hashtag anywhere is possible. Because with General Tire, anywhere is possible. The Subaru WRX and WRX STI, a 268 horsepower turbocharged Subaru boxer engine rockets the WRX around corners and down straightaways. A race-ready 305 horsepower turbocharged Subaru boxer engine keeps the WRX STI a rally legend. The Subaru WRX and WRX STI, it's not a sibling rivalry, it's a tag team. Get the latest from Subaru Rally Team USA at Subaru.com slash rally. Looking to have some fun on four wheels? Dirtfish Rally School has you covered. Packing as much adrenaline and adventure as you can handle into high-performance all-wheel drive and rear-wheel drive Subaru Rally cars is where the fun begins at Dirtfish. Just 30 minutes outside of Seattle and Snoqualmie, you'll get a chance to train up to three full days with some of the country's best instructors and be put through the high-octane rush of rally on mud, dirt, and tarmac. Get started today and call 425-888-7715 or visit us online at dirtfish.com and use code 911 for a 15% discount. Come to the island and rip it up this summer. Wakeboard Island. It's a skate park on water at Blue Water Resort and Casino. Check out the two-tower cable system that pulls you and your board over the water. No boats to watch out for. No fumes. Wakeboard Island is open to all skill levels with an open center section for beginners. And for trick riders, a double side kicker in a 60-foot flat box. Wakeboard Island. The best ride this side of the Rockies. Adjacent to the River's Edge Cantina at Blue Water Resort and Casino. On the Colorado River in Parker, Arizona. Like what you hear? Catch all the back episodes of the Down and Dirty Radio Show on Apple Podcast, And be sure to rate, review, and subscribe. Welcome back to the Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor, Jim Beaver, Amy Hood here. Uh, kicking off hour number two, and uh, we're going to talk a little pro moto. That's one thing. We've been so damn busy, <laughs> Amy Hood, that you and I... I'm trying to think back. I don't think we've even talked remotely on pro motocross yet this year. That's kind of a fail, uh, mostly on my part, but I guess a li- both of us can take a little blame here. But there's been a lot going on in pro moto. Yeah, I mean, we definitely, um, you know, the season kind of came out with a bang. But um, what I'm excited for, and I always get all hop- hopped up, is obviously like the European GPs. And this weekend, we kicked off the first uh, MXGP in France. And, I mean, man, I'm kind of surprised on the lineup. Jeffrey Hurling's going 1-1 over Tony Caroli. And, like, that sets the bar. I mean, Tony Caroli has always been the guy to beat. He's been so dominant over everybody. And everybody's been waiting for Hurling to move up to 450s. You know, he's always kind of played with some injuries here and there. He's kind of almost like... I'd like to say a mixture between a Dean Wilson and an Adam Centrello. Like, you know, he's kind of this wild card fan. He, either you love him or you hate him. And, um, you know, and, and Caroli is kind of like this poster child for the year, like, you know, the European series, kind of like our, our Ken Roxon on the box of Wheaties. So, you know, to have Antonio Caroli overthrown by Jeffrey Hurling is a huge, huge, huge deal in MXGPs. And I mean, no doubt in my mind, like Hurlings is extremely talented, amazing, amazing rider, but he just kind of comes with a lot of baggage and controversy. And they just, I just, re- I remember back Jim like two years ago and, and he had like, I don't know, like 350,000 followers on Instagram and he follows one person. You know who that person is? You? No, <laughs> Justin Bieber. <laughs> like the guy is like, he loves, like, you know, he, he just, He's controversial. He's just a little bit of like a bad boy, rough around the edges. Um, you know, a, a really great rider, but um, it's really going to kind of shape the way the European series looks up. And um, I'm, I'm excited. It's going to be an awesome, awesome year. You know, if uh, there's a lot of pressure on Caroli, it just makes for some great racing. And, um, you know, hopefully both of them stay healthy because I think we're going to see some awesome battles all summer long. I can't wait. Well, and here. We'll talk about uh, Lucas L. Promoto here in a second, but 
here's a question on an MXGP because you're you're well read on this and I'm not. Uh, I mean, I follow it loosely. Um, why why is it like American riders, people that race pro moto, they race supercross. We've got some uber talented guys. Why how come the guys from the states don't go over there and compete more often? I mean, like when Villa Poto decided to do it a couple years ago, like that was massive. You know, like global news, like. Holy crap, Villapoto's coming over here. And then, if I remember right, he won one round, but he struggled a bit. Um, is it that much harder? Yeah. Is it, is it, are the tracks that much different? I mean, why why don't we see more of our blue chippers go over there, you know? Um, I mean, it's definitely a completely different um, track layout. So we'll talk about that in a second. But it's same thing, you know, vice versa. Why don't we see more Europeans come over here? I mean, we do. We've got the Kennys and the Marvins, but... Everyone's like, why isn't Antonio Caroli coming over here? Blah, blah, blah. And Hurlings. Well, A, they're making so much goddamn money over in Europe, and they're like gods there. Like, why would they come over here? But a, a big, big thing is the tracks. Um, I believe they also run 40-minute motos plus two laps. So, boom, there you go. You already got, you know, the, the endurance side of it. But the tracks in the European series, they're called natural terrain quote-unquote, natural train. So, actually, when they had the GP over in South Carolina, um, you know, there was a big petition, or not petition, but, you know, a lot of talk to get rid of one of these, like, uphill triples because they don't have obstacles like that over in the GP series. Um, you have more of this, like, natural terrain rolling up and downhill, ruts that are, like, this up to the shrouds. I mean, the, just the styles of the tracks are very different a lot more aggressive and I know the races are a lot longer it makes her a lot more of a grueling you know outdoor series for sure I, I just think the pedigree of those European riders are almost on a different level but you know hit and miss because when they come over here they you know they they have a hard time keeping up with our our guys I say it as if I'm American but um, you know they don't have the types of big obstacles and and like um, technical sections like they do in America. They actually x those out in the GP series. So it's, they, they, they make it so that it's this quote-unquote natural terrain style. But again, they just have a different way of riding. Even when you go over there, the riding style is a lot different. Um, you know, I never see them sitting down. I saw Tony Caroli hit like a 180 rutted corner completely standing up. Like it was just a, uh, an obstacle. Like it's something I've never seen before ever in the U.S. Like, their their riding style is night and day different. But, you know, it's kind of where you fit. Like, you get great supercross riders and people who suck at outdoors and vice versa. I think we'll have great European riders who are used to the European tracks and the European style of racing compared to, you know, America. But also, they ride a lot of the edges of the track. Um, it's this high-speed, like, almost highway style of racing where – like, it's just, I don't know, it's something really, really different. How they build the tracks are different. Um, you know, the soil and the terrain is going to be really different. It's just, um, you know, you're crossing the pond. It's going to be a different kind of, a whole different ball game. But, you know, Tony Caroli gets paid, like, freaking millions of dollars to, you know, be this legend and this god of the European racing world. He ain't never going to come over and race in America. Like, why would he? He's doing so good over there. He's going to stay there. So, you know, I just, uh, it'd be cool if they had a little bit more you know, crossover. And they do. I love that they have a GP over in Europe. I love that they're doing that. They're, you know, they're blending the fields and you get to really see the Europeans versus the Americans line up and where they fit. But, um, yeah, I just think, you know, this year it's, it's, I think Jeffrey Hurlings is going to be the king and the god of the moto world. And I'm really excited to see, like, when he comes over here and what he, how he fares up to our guys. But, um, you know, him and Caroli have been really, really, really dominant over pretty much the entire field forever. Uh, you know, Villapoto and Dungey have really been the only guys to kind of ever challenge them. Yeah. Well, we got to switch gears. We've got a couple of minutes left in this segment. we got to talk outdoors here in the States. Yeah. Uh, big news, Zach So o. crazy. Yes. Zach O. Zach O is out for the year. Oh. Yes. Uh, it's so sad because, uh, you know, no, Jeremy right now, Jeremy Martin's running that red plate. Uh, I mean, kudos to the guy, but I mean, you never want to see someone walk away with the championship because of that, you know, like I wanted to see heated battles. I, you know, if Zach was still in, you know, Jeremy would be having to fight 10 times harder. Um, 
I'm just really hoping that that Justin Cooper pokes his nose in there. Like, we were talking about this on the road trip home. Man, the kid is so young. He's so talented. And he is just making his freaking name for himself. Like, I love watching this guy ride. we got to have him on the show. Um, I just want to pick his brain. I just want to see, like, how he is mentally, like, his maturity level. Because the kid's young, and he's slaying it. And I think if anybody, by the end of this series, I think that, you know, it's going to be Justin Cooper that challenges uh, Jeremy Martin, and I'm freaking ready and willing to watch it happen because he, it's, he's it's going to be so cool. He's the new Forkner, right? He's the new kid that slid in there and just oh, like, heck on him yeah. Here. Uh, yeah. So here's a question, 250s. We only got like a minute, minute and a half left. But, you you know, it sucks that Zach O's gone, but just judging by the, the way things look, I think we're going to have a Martin battle. Alex and Jeremy, like, I think we're going to see brothers oh, do battle I this know, year. Oh, Jim. Yeah, I didn't even think about that for a second there, but I've been watching results, and I, I, I kind of blew my mind until you told me that. But, yeah, this is like the first time in history. I think there's maybe one other year where, I mean, it was one race. But, you know, knowing the Martin boys for, since they were kids and growing up with them, I mean, it's always, always, always been Alex dominant over Jeremy. And then, boom, the table switch. Jeremy, you know, winning back-to-back outdoor championships. This is going to be an amazing year if both brothers can be fighting each other for the championship because they know each other's riding styles. They know their weak points, and they know their strengths. So I think we're going to see such an amazing dynamic of racing, like just – probably on the aggression level that we've something you've never seen before. And I don't think we've ever had brothers in history battling for an outdoor 250 championship in history. So man, let's, let's keep this ball rolling. I love to see the Martin battle. All right. 30 seconds left. It looks like uh, moving to four fifties. Tomac's kind of running away with things right now, but Ken Roxon, I feel like he's finally starting to get his mojo back. Yeah, but I think I just heard something. I got to look it up right now, but didn't we hear that Tomac, is injured and something happened with him. Let's look into it and I'll be able to kind of recap with you guys um, in the next segment here. But I'm pretty sure Tomac. All right. Something happened to him. We'll circle back to that after this break here on the Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. Thanks for tuning in to the Down and Dirty Radio Show. Available live online in syndication on networks across the U.S. and available internationally on the American Forces Network. And we are back here on the Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. Uh, we're going to take some fan Q and A's. We've had a lot of them built up. I got four questions because I could I could say we got like eight questions, which we could. But we Amy and I always go long on these things, so I'm like, let's keep it at four so we can actually really talk. Uh, we we're talking pro moto in the last segment. We are going to have to do our homework this week, and we're going to come back next week, and we're going to talk even more pro moto, and we're going to answer those questions that Amy and I raised and couldn't actually competently answer on air. No, both of us we couldn't figure problems. it out in a short period of time. Yeah. So whatever. We'll, wasn't we'll, enough. We'll, we'll recap with who's in and who's out next week. All right. So rolling into fan Q and A's because we always need the entire segment to do these. So we got four questions. Um, first one coming at you. And if you guys ever want to send us questions, contact form on the website at downanddirtyshow.com. It's at Jim Beaver 15 on social or at Amy Hood 71 DMs. You can use the Facebook group. Uh, whatever, man. We'll, we'll, we get them a million different ways, and uh, we'll try and cycle them in if they're good questions. Anyways, this one is from Darren in Speedway, Indiana. Speedway, Indiana is uh, basically the home of Indianapolis Motor Speedway, for those of you that don't know. Um, anyways, Indy Bump Day. Thoughts going forward. Hinch is one of my favorite drivers. He didn't make the bump. What are your thoughts? Should Indy change that? And I'm, uh, come on. I, I don't know. I love Hinch. Hinch is actually, a, a, you know, he's one of our a great friend of the show. We've had him on numerous times. One of my favorite drivers. Great personality. Fan favorite, absolutely. But Bump Day goes back 100 years. Like, you don't change it because, you know, the guy, and he'll tell you, like, we failed. We got bumped. And the guys there at Schmidt-Peterson Motorsport, they, they are phenomenal. Wiccans. Everybody in the organization, they've embraced the show. They follow us on social media. They repost our stuff. And they'll be the ones to tell you, too, like, hey, look, this is Indianapolis 500. Bump day is what it is. If you're not fast enough to make the cut, you just get bumped out. Now, granted, Hinch, he got – and you can go back and listen to this show. um, He got a raw deal. 
IndyCar didn't approach that right. The, the session was cut 10 minutes short because of a TV window. Uh, there was rain delays. Like, I don't think Hinch got a fair shake, but at the end of the day, I do think that bumping should be there. I mean, we can go back, Ryan Hunter Ray one year didn't make it. There was Penske's that didn't make it before. Like, it's tradition. If you're not fast enough, you make the cut. I'm sorry. It's like pro moto, you know? It's like it doesn't matter if you're Ryan Dunn. Yeah, yeah. If you're too yeah, slow and like, you can't qualify to the main, you, you, get, you get from people you think get an automatic token in. But, I mean, you like that. That's racing. That's, that's it. That's racing. And that's what's great about bump day at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway, you know? Uh, it's one of the few motorsports that doesn't protect its main drivers in their biggest event and i think that's what's great i mean it's like the super bowl right it, yeah. in the super bowl if the best team sucks in the nfc finals or the afc finals they don't make the super bowl they don't go oh well you have the best record so we're just going to put you in the super bowl like i don't know There's, yeah it's i'd say we keep bump day the way it is uh i do think that in the case of hinch he got a raw deal because the tv window like I don't care about TV time. I'd rather see a guy get an extra 10 minutes to try and qualify in. So those are my thoughts on bump day. I say keep it. And it uh, sounds like Amy says keep it too. And, um, yeah. So. Yeah, for sure. Moving on. This one is uh, this one is going to – Amy's going to have to carry me on this one. I can talk to the race car side of things. This is David in England. Um, I love it. But you uh, David in England. So um, he, this is kind of a fitness question. Okay. He says, Ooh, I'll definitely what, carry us all. <laughs> so he says, I know Formula One drivers have crazy, insane fitness, and I've heard IndyCar drivers do as well. He's like, how does that compare to Supercross and MotoGP fitness? Oh, my God, really? Okay. For, I can speak uh, to the on. auto side. Let me lay it down for you first. For, first and foremost, Moto. Pro outdoor moto and supercross is some of the most physically demanding sports in the world. Okay, like, I'm very, very biased against people who drive a car. I understand the fitness. I get it on the, uh, you know, I talk to Captain Murphy. I give him a lot of hard time at Monster Jam. But he, uh, you know, assures me and kind of showed me the ropes a little bit more about what goes on, with, you know, behind a wheel and inside a cockpit of a, you know, a NASCAR ride but still he ain't whipping around a 200 pound piece of metal jumping 75 feet if not like you know 130 feet in the air with 40 other guys behind you you know operating at your maximum heart rate capacity for 30 minutes plus two laps i mean there's nothing like it out there triathletes yeah maybe um you know people who do those american ninja warrior things like whatever but you know they say a lot of times they, they compare it to a triathlete who are operating at that high, high, high heart rate level. But outdoor motocross is hands down the one of the gruelingest and most intense um, physically demanding sports. And um, you know, look at the, the level of these athletes and you know, look at the training that they go through and, and look at the elite guys. They all, you know, kind of in that period, Jim, you, you can notice it. You really can tell when they go from 250 to 450, how like Ken Roxon, um, Jason Anderson, Eli Tomac, a lot of these guys, oh, and especially Adam Cinderella, these younger guys, you know, when they jumped on the bigger bikes and they started being competitive, like the, their body dynamics changed, like how much they leaned out, you know, they post so much about their fitness regime. But, you know, can't, this is why Red Bull op, offers this. They have like training labs for their top level athletes. I've Obviously, been to Red it. Bull is eating the it. game for. What's that? I've been to the one in uh, in California, the Red Bull Training Lab thing is freaking insane. Yeah, like they hook your whole thing up, your whole, uh, you know, you're hooked up to everything, and, and they train you from your cardio, vascular strength to your muscle endurance. Uh, you know, and it's you're really operating, and you train within this heart rate level that operates as if you're going through a race. So you're training like you're racing and they're trying to get your vitals and your signs and, and, you know, everything internal operating like you will when you're racing. Cause if you can train your body to operate at your peak training performance, you'll be able to do it on track and tech and, and technically they say you're supposed to train harder than you will race. So it makes racing easy and training harder. So, I mean, I love it. Like that's what's so gnarly about it. That's why not everybody can do this sport at an elite level because of the, the training that is goes behind it. It's there's nothing like it. Yeah. Well, and the, the thing is, David, okay. So fitness for F1 and IndyCar 
if you look at any motorsport in the world, I'm talking four-wheel motorsport, those are absolutely the most extreme. NASCAR doesn't even is not even in the same atmosphere yeah. as these. But the reason why it's it's not necessarily muscular strength. The, your cardio, especially to do the Indy 500, it, it was 90 something degrees. I think at the on the track it was 130 degrees, and those guys were in the car for four hours. So your cardio has to be on point. Yeah. So th- those guys having insane cardio, but for Formula One and IndyCar, the G forces to go 230 miles an hour around corners, it's constantly. It, it's like having you know. It's I can't even. It's just having somebody push you yeah. into a wall for four hours straight. So their neck That's muscles, so- their neck muscles and things like that to keep their head straight, they they work on different parts of the body that say other athletes don't. But like their neck muscles are insane. Yeah, I, I believe it. And their shoulders and things like that. So it's a different type of fitness. Don't get me wrong, IndyCar and Formula One drivers, they gotta be in shape, really good shape. But it's a different fitness from say Supercross. And I don't even know about Moto GP. I'm assuming they train similar to Supercross, but I, I don't know. It might be a hybrid because the G forces that Moto GP have are probably similar to Formula One. I don't know. What do you think? Yeah, Amy? at the same time, like it, yeah, it's not the the type of endurance, obviously, the outdoor pro motocross. But but um, you know, you look at these athletes. Like I follow, um, you know, I I follow um, Valentino, the top guys too, and like watching them and and like. Like, even Jorge Lorenzo, I love watching his training videos. He's always in the gym if he's not on the road. Like, these guys, and, and they say, too, you know, your body can withstand anything. It's the mind you have to, to train. You know, fitness is a huge compa- component in mentally preparing yourself as well. Yes, you're training your body, but you're also training your mind. When you put in the work, you are, your your confidence level just freaking skyrockets, right? Like, you put in the work, it's like a full package deal. It becomes a lifestyle, and it's just, yeah, I don't, I mean, I can't even explain it. It's just, yeah. it's, I don't think there's any type of training other than triathletes that train on, you know, the level of, um, you know, two wheel motorsports. Jim, I'm super biased for, but I, I get it. But the motocross is just so, so cool. So, it's so amazing. All right. So, two questions left. You have 30 seconds to answer this one. Literally 30 seconds because we don't have a lot of time. Um, This one's pretty easy. This is Kathy in Virginia. She's a Monster Jam fan. Uh, She just wants to know when you're back in the Monster Truck and uh, what your schedule looks like for this fall. Uh, Are they going to be able on the East Coast to see you? I can't answer I will actually have nine more shows in the U.S. My schedule is dropping pretty soon. But I'm going to be touring. I start again in October 2nd. I'm going to be going everywhere from South Dakota to Illinois, back to Rosemont, for I think like four shows in Chicago, but then I am hopping on a plane and I am going over to Brazil, um, Chile, and Argentina. So I'm so excited to get my first international tour experience, and uh, yeah, it's gonna be wild. All right, last question. This one I can take. Uh, this is Mike in Michigan. Thoughts on the Lucas uh, short course merger? Is it gonna be good for the sport? Uh, what do you think the schedule look like next year? Uh, thoughts on it? It's amazing. Finally, we're unified. It needed to happen. Uh, I've always, I said it so many times. I'll say it again. Don't judge 2018. Um, this is a year that they're rebuilding. Start in 2019, really yeah. looking at things. Um, it's going to be amazing for the sport. Schedule next year, ooh, that one's a tough one. I think you're still going to see the same four event weekends in the Midwest. I think they're going to be merged somehow with the West Coast Series, maybe have one big championship. That's me guessing i really don't know but uh i'm definitely looking forward to things to come uh from uh from short course in general this is a good thing for short course and i'm very excited about the future and we will be back after this on the down and dirty radio show powered by polaris razor want the latest from jim beaver and amy hood follow at jim beaver 15 and at amy hood 71 on facebook instagram and twitter Welcome back to the Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. I'd like to welcome my brother, Mr. Steve O. Steve Torrance, to the line. How is everything going, Steve? Beaver, everything is going bad to the bone, man. We it, we got down and dirty, hot and sweaty, all of the above at the Virginia Nationals up there in Richmond, man. I got to tell you, you've had uh, you've had a pretty you, 
you're kind of carrying things for chocolate and cream right now. It's it's a lot of cream, and I'm not seeing much chocolate in Top Fuel. I know, and I told him, I said, man, it's hot chocolate and warm cream this weekend. <laughs> the uh, I don't know, man. AB's been struggling. They ain't had the best car that you know this year. They just had had some some crew issues by them, some bad luck by them, all of the above. But I mean, I'm not gonna. I'm not going to hang up on that because my old race car has been running pretty dead gum good. I've been driving okay, and them guys have pulled me out of the fire when I needed it. But, you know, four wins in nine races, I ain't complaining about nothing. No, you, well, and it's funny because this has become like the top fuel show, it seems like. Like three or four weeks ago, I had Leon, had uh, Clay last week, got you this week. I, I think we're just going to have to book off like a segment, just make it like – the top fuel hour or something but talking with clay he's had a hell of a year too but he goes man he goes i got nothing for them capco boys he goes i, I he's like you know steve's always fast but he goes we're doing everything we can to even get close this year you know i mean you you guys yeah. at capco are just you guys are firing man man i don't know we've been more consistent than those guys but we ain't been as fast you know he goes out there and sets a national record and just rotates the earth every time the track gets good we've just We've been able to capitalize on consistency, and, and that, you know, at the end of the day, that's what it's going to be. But it is pretty dead gum gratifying to look up there, and be, and, and number one and, and two in the points are independent teams, you know, with us and Clay going out there and dominating those multi-car teams. I, I'm pretty proud to say that we're kicking their butt on the reg. You know, and that, that's what's funny because he mentioned that too, and uh, I – I, you know, that's one thing where, you know, I, I've been around your operation. You guys had me out there at Vegas, and uh, uh, I got to tell you, it, it's very much, I've been around corporate teams, and not to say that's a bad thing, but you guys are very much a family feel, and, uh, you know, you guys are involved, the family's there. Uh, you know, that's got to be, you know, you know how much Schumacher is spending in some of those other teams. And, uh, I mean, don't get me wrong, you guys are spending a lot of money, but it's got to feel really good knowing that you guys are, you know, like you said, spanking them and, uh, you know, and you guys are doing it on, you know, as an independent. Yeah, it really does. And and I know that those guys over there are probably catching heck from all different sides because, you know, they have been a dominating force. They've gone out and not only outrun us, but made us like it for quite a few years. And, and the last few years, the tides have changed and, Richard Hogan, Bobby Lagana, everyone on that Capco team has really stepped up. We keep our heads down and, and just work really hard. And we've been able to uh, flex our muscles a little bit and not only outrun them every now and then, but, you know, quite a bit. Well, that being said, I mean, uh, you know, heading into this year, you were damn close last year, Steve. I mean, you know, and you and I talked about this in person. And, uh, you know, you, I think you had a little bit of a chip on your shoulder coming into this this season, but, I mean, you couldn't have expected what you guys are doing. I mean, you want to have a year like you're having, but it's not something you can plan on. No, it's not. You know, last year was the best year of my career, and I'll tell you, I did have a chip on my shoulder. I, was, I wasn't just a little bit bothered about it. I was all out pissed off, and uh, it took a few races for me to kind of figure out, hey, I need to go out here and have a good time and, and, and just – Stay focused, stay intense as I've ever been, but you can't be mad about it. I mean, it is what it is, and the points are going to be what they're going to be. But I think that uh, I got a stat last night from a PR guy that said we've won the la- we've won 12 races out of the last 30, and, and that's uh, more than double what anybody else has done. So I think that everybody knows that we're there for business, and, you know, we're, we're, we're a force to be reckoned with, and, and you can't argue that fact. Yeah, well, and it's, it's not just you've been fast this year. I mean, you know, your dad, he's, he's, you know, he's been pretty damn quick, too. He has, and it, it's, it's fun to see. My old man shows up, and, you know, everybody gives him crap for being, being 60 and racing top fuel, and what's he doing? Does he really think he can compete? And then he goes out there and goes to a couple different semis, and he and I race heads up and have the best race of the weekend. And, you know, uh, the last race he was at Topeka, he's out there, and he's, he's I was, uh, first best average reaction time through qualifying, and he was second best. So, I mean, not only is it fun, but it makes me proud to know that my old man's out there banging heads with the best of us. Yeah. Well, and, and I, they, there's an ongoing joke I've heard before, and they said guys like John Force, gets up there in age, they just give him more horsepower. So, is your dad that quick, or is the team sliding him a little more horsepower they just haven't given you yet? Man, I don't know. I'll tell you, I do notice that he has some new stuff and new parts and pieces, but with all that being said, his name's on the bottom of all the checks, so they may be fudging him a little bit and, and giving him an advantage. 
whatever it takes. We just got to keep the we got to keep the sponsor happy. And at the end of the day, he's the sponsor. Yeah, as long as you as long as your old man's happy, you guys are going racing and uh, life is good, right? Right. I told him. I said, man, if this doesn't work out, we can at least go race with Beaver over there in that desert stuff. You, I mean, you you sp- you spin out or have a wreck or whatever, you get to keep going in that deal. We're done in less than four seconds. Yeah. Well, I know your mom. She uh, we're talking to her in Vegas. She looked at me and uh, I said, "Hey, I, I gotta apologize." I said, "I think uh, I think your son found another hobby." And she just kind of looked at me and she says, "Yeah, he's got a lot of <laughs> hobbies and all of them are expensive." <laughs> <laughs> Mama K is never gonna be at a loss for words or or beat around the bush. She's gonna tell you exactly how it is at all times, and yeah, she's pretty correct on that. Yeah. <laughs> Well, you know, we got to talk real quick about this schedule because I'm just looking down here, and uh, you guys, you're not, you're not having much of a breather here lately. Um, I mean, it's just event after event. You guys are in a hell of a stretch, and this thing, what do you got? Uh, you got Bristol coming up. Uh, you turn around, what is it, the uh, NHRA, the Summit NHRA Nationals? I mean, you guys are just, bam, how, how do you guys keep it together? I mean, that's got to be pretty tough on the team. I know you're able to go home at least for a day or two and, get, and you know, catch a breath, but how about everybody else on the team? Man, I'll tell you what, when we have these deals where we raced, we raced three in a row, we were off a week, we, we had one race, and we're off a week, and now it's four in a row. The summertime, they got us stacked up on the schedule quite a bit, and you're right, I get to go home and go to work and, and kind of get a breather, but these guys are on the road three and four weeks at a time, and it just, it beats the crap out of them. As a, as a driver, it's good, because you get to stay in your routine, you go out there, and it's it's doing it. It's repetition and you don't have any lag time, but the guys that are working on these things, I mean, it's, it's gruesome when you're living in a hotel every night and three nights out of the week, you're, you're working on a race car till 10, 11 o'clock at night, especially having these late sessions like we have in the summertime. I mean, that's when these guys really earn their money and earn their keep. And those Capco boys, I've told you this time and time again in person while we're at the races and, and, you know, just talking, they're the best. I mean, those guys have, have rose to the occasion any time they needed to, whether you wreck a car and put one together in 45 minutes or, you know, you go back-to-back races. I mean, we've been able to assemble a team of, of just bad hombres, and, I mean, it's showing. Well, and, you know, and that being said, I mean, when you're in a stretch like this that you guys are in where it's back-to-back and you're winning like you are, it, it makes it a little bit easier for them to want to do the job too, right? Oh, it absolutely does. I mean, hell, you can do anything if you're winning. It, I mean, it makes all those explosions and burn-up parts and bad days, all that goes away at least for a little bit until the bills come in. But when you're winning, I mean, it, you just keep going. You know, it's just it's a little extra gas in the tank, a little more fuel for the fire, and you just you keep firing on all eight. Yeah, well, and, you know, that being said, you were talking about, you know, you get into repetition. You as a driver, I mean – uh, you know, and, and I know with me in a desert, it's a little bit different because we have big off seasons and every track is different, but with you guys, I mean, it, it, you know, every track has a little bit differences, but you think it's been really in this points ch- battle that you're in. I mean, the repetition and just in and out of the car and, and, you know, you kind of get into a groove of things. Is it, you know, has it been easier for you once you fall into that groove just to kind of go in and just click off these rounds? Yeah, it is easier. I mean, the more times you go down the racetrack, the more, often you're in the car, the better you're going to do. And, you know, last year we made probably 180, 190 laps in a season, which is is typically a lot more than any team will average just because you're going rounds. You go, you know, four qualifying rounds, and then you go to the final, you got eight laps in a weekend, and you, you do that time and time again. And just going going rounds makes you a better driver because you're more comfortable in the seat. You have more experience. And anytime you can do that, back-to-back weekends like clay went two finals in a row and two wins you drive better you go out there and i mean it's it's you don't have any time that you can really get in one of these things and practice you know it's it's always qualifying or it's always race day so the more laps you make the more repetition you make the more comfortable you get and you and you stop being a driver and you just turn into somebody that's sitting in the seat reacting you're just another part of the car instead of something that is a thinking process and the less thinking you do the better you are. <laughs> well, that's that's definitely the truth, man. So I uh, got to ask you, uh, you know, we're talking some NHRA here. Uh, we'll circle back to that. But uh, 
Uh, I got to tell you, man, we made some, uh, some a lot of changes, a lot of upgrades. This Polaris Razor I got in the shop, and uh, I, I got to tell you, the entire end is tied to the car. You wouldn't even notice it, but uh, I'm keeping that seat warm for you sometimes, Steve-O, so I'm, I'm just putting it out there, buddy. Hey, I've been keeping track with you on social media. <laughs> I saw you got a new brake and all the aluminum stuff on the inside. I, I, I just said Old Beaver's getting that thing ready for me, man. He knows it. He knows that I'm, I'm back and in business, and, and me and A.B. are coming out chocolate and cream it's gonna be i mean you know i don't know if they're ready for us we just gave them a little taste at the 400 but when we come back we're unleashing the fury on them brother <laughs> chocolate and cream 2.0 i dig it man this is uh this is gonna be i don't know if i want to race with you guys i may just stand back and watch this i may just hang out with natalie and watch the show <laughs> no we we're gonna need you for cleanup i mean we, we just we're there for lap one and two, and then, and then you're going to finish it for us. All right. <laughs> I get to drive what's left. <laughs> hey, now, hey, no, no need for that. No. I, no both, I got to say, both you guys did a hell of a job, man. There was uh, neither one of you put a ding on the car, so uh, I can't ask for much more out of teammates, man. Uh but uh, that being said, man, we got to circle back. NHRA, obviously, we're you know we're kind of about mid season now. I mean, what, what did you learn from last year? You know, we got the stretch coming up. You know, a lot of rounds back to back to back over the summer. I mean, you know, how do you stay up on top? Just stay focused. Just keep on. You know, keep in mind the end goal is is those last six races of the season. So well, everything we're doing now is preparing for the countdown, preparing to to chase that championship real hard, and just be geared up to uh to finish strong you know last year we had a really good car all season long we won won eight of the 24 races so i mean we, we were winning at every third race we went to we won and when we had that wreck in the countdown it just took us out of the it took us out of contention we weren't able to rebound as quick as we needed to and so i think uh our main focus this year is to 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 have a more diverse setup and and not solely depend on this one car so we may change cars or change parts and pieces out through the year that just are are for backup they're for spare in in the event that you have that situation happen you never plan for that the way that you actually should until it happens to you and then it's kind of like you know the horse you, you brought died and you got to ride another one <laughs> i love how you always bring the cowboy back into things man that's <laughs> uh Hey, what about what about at Richmond? I, I brought all them badass cowboys out on the stage with them new resist all hats. Yeah, I saw that, man. Uh, uh, I like it. You always got your own flavor to everything, and I think that's why the fans dig it too, man. Yes, sir. Well, Steve, I gotta gotta say, man, we're uh, running close to a break here, but I appreciate you taking the time to call in. Uh, congrats on the win! It's been fun watching uh, watching you boys, and I think uh, at some point this uh, year, I think what is around the Seattle round, I think we're all gonna go play in some rally cars up there uh, around Seattle. So uh, I'm looking forward to that, man. I'm looking forward to it. I think we're gonna take a trip up to Dirtfish and see if us us, us old straight line special guys can make some corners in the dirt. Yeah, I think it's it's going to be a blast. I'm already I'm looking forward to that trip. Out all the ones I got to take this summer, I think that one uh, that one's going to be uh, probably the most fun. So, uh, thanks a lot, my Absolute. friend, and uh, you know, good luck the rest of this year. Thanks, brother. Appreciate you having me on. I'm looking forward to seeing you again. That was my brother Steve O. Oh, Steve Torrance with Capco, your points leader in top fuel in NHRA coming off a big win this past weekend you can catch him in action again this next weekend man they are in one hell of a stretch there in nhra but uh, we're going to take a short break coming back after this on the downer dirty radio show powered by polaris razor thanks for tuning in to the down and dirty radio show available live online in syndication on networks across the u.s and available internationally on the American Forces Network. Welcome back to the Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. Wrapping things up on an awesome, awesome show. Big thanks to Steve Torrance for calling in today. Um, obviously, Amy Hood, Keegan Kincaid, uh, my boy Matty Brabham, 
Uh, lots of fun, man. Uh, kind of an eclectic group. Different uh, IndyCar driver turned off-road racer. Off-road racer, OG, legit family legacy. And then we've got uh, uh, Steve Torrance, my star car teammate, and NHRA uh, badass on the line. So never a dull moment today on the show. Um, Man, we got Pro Motocross. We got a couple of Lucas rounds back to back with the Midwest Short Course one, and then the one in Meat Wheatlands, uh, uh, Missouri. We got NHRA. We got more IndyCar coming at you after a week break this weekend. So, locked and loaded. ARX. Um, man, wh what else do we have to talk about? X Games coming up at some point. It's uh, it's going to be one uh, one hell of a ride, man. Um, but uh, thank you to Polaris Razor, General Tire, Subaru, Vision Wheel, Casey Alley, Skipson Exhaust, Dirtfish, Impact, Optimus, Moto Shield Pro, Terracross, and the Blue Rock Water Resort and Casino. Uh, I am at Jim Beaver 15. Amy is at Amy Hood 71 on all forms of social media. Don't forget, rate, review, subscribe to Project Action as well as the Down and Dirty Radio Show. Project Action, I got Brittany Palmer uh, coming up this week. So you'll definitely want to catch that interview. And um, make sure and check out our website, downanddirtyshow.com, for all that written content we've been dropping and uh, all the fun that we've been having over there. Uh, anyways, catch me on Lucas Oil TV this weekend, calling the Midwest Short Course Round. Hopefully we'll see you there. I'll be uh, doing social media while I'm there, too. Get a hold of me at, at Jim Beaver 15 uh, Be safe, as always. See you next week, and game on. <laughs> 